Good morning, welcome to this update from Phoenix Blue on Monday the 19th of September. I'm Tom Colley and I'll talk to you about the markets and the news this morning. And it's news that's going to dominate this week. It's a really, really huge week for news. Um, we have a number of central bank announcements, um, central bank speeches, etc, etc. And on the Phoenix Blue watch list over the weekend, we have put out a caution warning um, suggesting that we will only trade FX markets with price action as opposed to our normal limit orders at market caps, etc. Um, this means that we'll be looking um, for additional confirmation before entering any trades in what's likely to be um, a very volatile week. Let's have a look at the news events uh, item by item anyway. Um, today, we don't actually have any events other than the Japanese bank holiday. That will naturally have a lack of volume in the uh, yen and Nikkei 225 markets overnight in what would have been their trading session. Uh, going forward from there, Tuesday overnight, tomorrow we've got monetary policy meeting minutes from uh, Australia. We've also got tomorrow, Tuesday, the Bank of Canada, Governor Polos speaking. And it's Wednesday that's the really big, big day for news events. However, we do anticipate Monday and Tuesday will be um, very quiet pending those events. So there won't be a lot of opportunity to trade anything um, as the market waits for the announcements. Now, on Wednesday overnight, we've got uh, another Aussie event. That's the Mid-Year Economic and Fiscal Outlook data coming out. And then the first of the biggies is the Bank of Japan Monetary Policy Statement and the Bank of Japan Press Conference. Now, the Bank of Japan have been undertaking a review of their substantial existing easing policies, um, specifically to be discussed and to guide them at this particular meeting. Um, there is talk of or rumour of potential additional cuts in rates deeper into the already, already negative territory. Um, there's also been talk of helicopter money which has been specifically denied um, but it certainly means there is a lot of uncertainty of what might come out of this meeting um, hence the comment that I've already made is we will be trading or if trading at all only with additional confirmations at major major levels. OK, uh, obviously then we've got the crude oil inventories and then the real, real big one, the biggest one of them all is the FOMC. Um, we've got the statement, the federal funds rate and the press conference. These are the normal three that come out eight times a year. But it's also uh, one of every other of those events where the um, economic projections are announced. So more significant than everyone um, there. Now, we've also had a lot of talk leading up into this If you um, from the Fed themselves. They've had speakers out up until about a week, 10 days ago, constantly suggesting that a rate rise is still on the cards for this September meeting. Um, we discussed, I think it was Friday, that there is a meeting on in November, but there's no press conference. It's seven days or six or seven days before the presidential election. So nobody expects anything to come out of that meeting whatsoever. So if we don't get a rate rise here in September, it, it will be um, December before the opportunity really rises again. Arises again, sorry. Um, now... As I said, is I think without the Fed having talked up the possibility of a rate rise in September, I think the markets would be even more convinced that there isn't going to be a rate rise. Um, that still is the general opinion, but the possibility um, does exist and that will create um, a degree of volatility around those statements. Now, when we go and look at the charts, what I show you will basically be we're looking for these, um, the decision that comes out of the Fed, the Bank of Japan, really to create um, activity or movements on the charts that will really allow us to trade levels next week if things pan out as we expect. We will be watching the charts and if opportunities arise, obviously we will be trading those and you'll be able to um, either if you're part of the uh, 
Phoenix Moo family, you'll be able to be on the Skype group, um, but you'll also um, can keep up to date on our Instagram page, which is Phoenix Blue Trading. Okay, still on Wednesday, we've got another central bank announcement, this time um, from the Reserve Bank of New Zealand, where we again get uh, their cash rates, their interest rates, and the statement as to why their decision has been made. Whether we'll see anything out of this again, um, I'm not expecting anything, um, unless potentially, bearing in mind how it falls time-wise, we get something from one of these other decisions that that need means that the uh, Bank of New Zealand need to react. Then on Thursday, we've got another bank holiday in Japan. We've got uh, US unemployment claims, but then we've most importantly, we've got the ECB president, uh, Mario Draghi, speaking. And again, this is probably most significant because it comes immediately or the day after the Bank of Japan and the Fed statements. Um, so there may be some comment in reaction if we get something from those statements. So as you can see, a really busy week. Uh, it's really about the significance of the news we've got rather than the pure uh, number of events. It's the central banks. They're the ones that we um, are really waiting on to give the markets direction and have been waiting on for a number of months now. Quick look over at the charts. This is the dollar index. Um, last week we said we were looking for a break above 96.20 to confirm dollar strength um, in order for us to take um, end of day type trades on the majors and minors. We didn't see that on Friday. We did see a nice bullish day. Um, really, it was a bullish afternoon UK time. Um, but we didn't break above this level. What we'll be looking for this week is for that level to be broken potentially um, to confirm that dollar strength if that's the way that the markets are going to go. Um, similarly, we have a level down here or the trend line here which we're looking to see if um, the markets are driven in the other direction a break below there um, in order to give us clear direction in order to be able to um, place high probability trades. The euro as always is, is somewhat a reflection of the uh, dollar index. Again we're going to look for a breakout of this triangle formation to give us uh, a clear direction before we start risking our capital um, into next week. Over on the yen, well this chart has really been static. It seems that we've been looking at it like this for weeks and weeks. Um, but the same uh, basic rule applies here. Um, we need a breakout of this channel stroke trend line here on uh, the long side if we see dollar strength. Even then we'll be looking for a break above this 104 level for a retest to take that to the long side um, as an on dollar strength. If the Fed disappoint or the Bank of Japan disappoint um, then we'll be watching this zone between $199 where we have previously seen uh, Bank of Japan intervention and that's what we'd expect to see again so we would be looking to um, potentially place trades around 100 with stops below 99 um, for uh, looking for that intervention over on the S&P, well that was a market that really moved um, last week. It moved a great deal on uncertainty. Um, there wasn't one specific thing that potentially drove the market. Um, I was reading over the weekend about market sectors and um, those being either bullish and bearish relative to um, the potential results of the US elections. Um, but even so, our position here now is, particularly this week, we will be looking, uh, the only trades we'll be looking to take would be either um, range reversal trades at these two levels here or a break and retest of either of those two le levels. So again, extremely cautious. Uh, this is gold. Well, we've been gold, short gold um, since a week ago last Thursday, I think it was. Um, we shorted immediately after the ECB um, rate announcement. Um, we had a little bit of money running through to this level around 13.10. Um, and we're now looking for a reaction between this 13.7 and 1300 big round number um, 
with a view to either the long side or the short side uh, in this market. Again, that'll be a break short or a break long. Um, this market has been acting, uh, or the safe havens of which this is one, have been acting independently of the uh, US equities, which is normally uh, act in a inverse relationship, as we know, as risk on and risk off. We haven't been seeing that. Um, but we see potential now for further downside in this market um, if we get the appropriate news out of the Fed this week. Okay, guys, so not a lot to trade there. More, um, really, to uh, a time to sit on your capital. We all know that the important thing in this game is to um, have retain capital for the time when the markets give us the best opportunities those opportunities are predominantly not going to come this week we're not going to be risking capital um, however if you are interested in the way we trade um, and you want to um, have the opportunity to trade for four hours with the phoenix blue fund managers um, we have an event this coming friday that's september the 23rd um, still time to attend that event um, if you go onto the, the website phoenixblue.co.uk go through to the events page of which this is, is, a, is a, a duplicate click through leave us your details and we can um, send you all the information you need to come along for that event on friday afternoon uh, in central london um, I've already mentioned Instagram. You can keep an eye on uh, any trades or any comment we have on the news through the going uh, ongoing through the week at Phoenix Blue Trading. Okay, guys, um, if you have any questions, you can either go to the web page and go through and leave um, those questions there, or you can um, question or leave questions for me directly at tom at phoenixblue.co.uk. Okay, um, we'll speak to you again in the morning, as we will through the week, um, but we potentially, it's, it's a sit and wait week. Thank you very much for listening. Take care.